Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Mono Battle I have for you guys today. This is Mono Fire. I've been playing around with these guys. Um, I know that town flame is Uber and all, or it's something, I don't know what it is, or OU or something. But this is actually a bulky town flame and um, I, it's like a bulk upset and it's it's fun. It's not boring, it's not banded Brave Bird spam, although I do have Brave Bird. But, um, I really enjoy actually using Town Flame. It's got amazing type coverage, and it's really not that horrible when you like play with it differently. I mean, it gets Torn and Will O Wisp, and it can be a really fun Pokemon to use. So please don't give me stick for using it because um, it's it's I enjoy using him, and it's really sweet. And um, I loved Fletchlander when I was playing the game before it got Gale Wings. So um, I used a lot of lower tier Pokemon to try and counter for the Town Flame anyway. Um, Ideally, I should have a Volcarona or something. Um, I have actually swapped out Nine Tails now for a um, Torkoal with Rapid Spin because rocks were getting annoying and um, stuff like that. I kind of wanted to put a Delphox in there as well, as, so I've been swapping around and um, playing around. Anyway, the person that I'm battling against is Chris, who is a friend of mine in real life who never really got into the competitive side until recently, but um, he's really got the hang of it and is very, very good very quickly. And um, it, he was really fun to battle, so I hope you guys enjoy this battle and I will just get straight on into it. Apologies if I sound kind of tired and stuff. I've been out all day in Manchester, so I am quite sleepy. Um, but I wanted to get this done so I can edit it tonight and have it uploaded for you guys tomorrow. So I'm going to lead out with Arcanine predicting the Mian Shao lead. Um, so I'm going to get in that Intimidate drop off. Even though I'm not actually a physically defensive Arcanine, um, I knew I would take this very, very well because uh, I've got max, max, because I have my max HP investment and. Um, Obviously I'm going to flinch that turn, I'm going to get my lefties and I'm not really going to have to worry about Mietzsche doing any damage to me. I'm going to go for the Protect here because I wasn't sure if he was running high jump kick and um, if in doubt, scout it out and uh, he was actually going to go for the U-turn so we are pretty safe. So I realised that I probably didn't have to protect this turn or swap out or anything because he was just going to go for a U-turn and um, do more damage to himself than he's going to do to me, although obviously he's going to get that regenerate on the swap so um, he's going to heal up that life all damage. And, um, swap out there so he's going to go back to Chris and Chris is going to send out the Warren who I fighting this thing was kind of tough um, especially towards the end of this battle I decided to t try and toxic stall it I was really trying to just bait it see if it was going to rest I wasn't sure what kind of set this thing was so I was very kind of cautious of this because Chris tends to run wild sets on things and um, I really didn't know what to expect from this thing so I decided to stay in go for the protect uh, try and just rack up that bit of toxic damage and uh, really see what this thing had for me. He's going to go for the Super Fang and I'm going to protect. The Super Fang obviously cuts your HP directly in half no matter what your defenses or boosts, screens, reflects, anything like that. It's going to cut that HP in half which is terrible news for my Arcanine because my Arcanine is a, well not physical war, but my Arcanine is a war uh, and is a stalling Arcanine. So I'm going to go for an E-Speed there just to get some damage off because Extreme Speed is my only attack and move and he's going to go for that Super Fang and that's going to cut my HP directly in half, but my left is going to take me just over, so I'm in greens again, and I don't really have to worry too much because I'm outspeeding this thing, and I do have the morning sun, as you can see I'm just going to go for that now, and restore my HP back up to pretty much full, or to exactly full, and uh, he's going to go for a brine, which is going to do more damage, I think, the less HP he has, and considering he's still in greens, um, that did quite a lot of damage to me, Obviously it's super effective, but uh, I feel like if he used it when he was in yellows or something, like now, that could have possibly taken me out. So I'm going to go for Protect. I uh, really didn't know what this thing was going to do. In hindsight, I probably should have gone for Extreme Speed here, and he's going to pull up that Rest, which I was kind of in the back of my mind. I was expecting him to have it because he would not have stayed in and let me stall him the way I was stalling him if he didn't. But he's going to be Rest of Chesto, which is worse. I was maybe hoping for a rest sleep talk because um, I could kind of troll around with that and set up with my camera up to something. Well, maybe not camera because it's four times we to water. But uh, he's going to swap out there anyway. I uh, didn't want the same thing to happen, so he's going to swap into his Raichu on my Toxic and my Toxic lands, which is great news because I've been using this Arcanine uh, previously in some matches and it missed every single Toxic that I used and it was so frustrating. So um, I'm going to get some Lefty's recovery there as he swapped out. 
and uh, I'm going to get a turn of rack up uh, toxic damage up on this thing. I'm going to go for the protect here because I wasn't sure if this thing had fake out. Most Raichus do. And uh, he's actually just going to go straight up for the Thunderbolt. He is a special Raichu, or he may be mixed, but he's more likely to be special. So um, I'm going to protect at the lefties and he's going to take that toxic damage there. Uh, Raichu is kind of frail, so um, I decided to just swap back here. I didn't want to get paralyzed or anything. So I'm going to go into my camera up, hoping that he'd go for another Thunderbolt as well, so get a free swap. And he is going to do that, so um, that's a really good swap in for me. As camera up is kind of slow, and um, I'm trying to run a growth set on it with Nine Tails' as Drought to get the plus two special attack boost. Uh, but it doesn't really work that well in singles, so um, I'm going to go for the Mega as he brings in the Enchow. And um, there's my Mega camera up. She looks so nice, shiny, I really like it. And um, have you ever noticed it's got like the M on its head as well? Um, so I'm gonna go for an Earth Power who's just gonna straight up OKO Mian Chao. I mean, I know that Sheer Force and Stab and I'm a Mega, but damn, I was not expecting that power. So uh, he's gonna bring in his Hitmonchan. And I wasn't sure what that thing had. Um, I don't know whether it gets Earthquake. Um, so I was kind of scared of that, so I decided to go into Talonflame, who was going to resist any fighting type moves as well, and he is going to go for a Drain Punch. So um, that was a pretty good swap on my part, and um, he's Life Orbed as well, so that would have really done some damage to my camera. So it's a good job I swapped out. So uh, I was hoping I could scare this thing out, obviously with a potential Brave Bird, as he has no idea what kind of set I'm running, and that is going to be the case. He's going to swap out and go into his Raichu. Uh, I'm going to predict that swap obviously and go for a free bulk up which is uh, awesome for me because then I'm going to be able to boost my terrible attack. I have no investment in attack at all on this Talonflame and Talonflame's attack already is not superb. It's decent when adamant and max invested in stuff but it's not amazing and um, I'm going to go for a boost here. So I'm roosting up to negate my flying typing, so if you guys are wondering why I was roosting on such low health, I'm negating my flying typing for this turn so the Thunderbolt is not super effective like it would have been. And look how much damage that does for non-super effective, that would have easily okayed me and that is crazy because I am max special defense. So um, I was kind of concerned about that, I decided I had no time to set up bulk ups or anything, I was just going to have to go for a brave bit and hopefully take this thing out. So I'm going to go for a brave bit and it is going to take it out thanks to the sheer force of brave bit's base power and the stab and the prior was very helpful as well. So um, I'm going to get my lefties recovery there and it's going to take me just up into greens which is um, great, that's what I kind of needed and he's going to swap into his Urshirang. Um, I'm going to go for a roost here, in hindsight I probably should have just gone for a brave bird, I was expecting a protect, I kind of over predicted there and he is going to go for the sword stance which is going to make his attack so powerful, not only is he going to be guts and not only is facade stab and more power when I'm poisoned but he's got a sword stance as well so if you guys can calculate how much power that facade is i would really really like to know so i'm gonna go for that brave bird and he's gonna go for the facade which is obviously gonna kill me i mean i'm quite surprised he gets swept by this thing um i <laughs> this was really scary uh this thing's attack must have been crazy so if any of you guys want to calculate then please put it in the description it'd be quite interesting to know so i'm going to swap into my archon here for the intimidate to maybe just save my ass a little bit and also i have the protect and the extreme speed so i really really save my butt here so i'm able to go for protect just to toxic stall that thing uh rack up that life or damage i knew he probably wasn't going to swap out because there's no point he'd have lost the sword stance boost so um i'm just going to get some lefties recovery as well which is awesome and he's going to take that little bit of damage, making um, him in extreme speed kill range. I don't think an extreme speed would have killed him from before because I have no attack investment. And extreme speed is obviously only base 40 and is a normal type move, so I'm not going to get stabbed from it either. So I'm going to get some lefties there. And uh, it's going to take me up to almost full. Um, and he's going to bring in this Pidgeot. Now this Pidgeot had... I hate Mega Pidgeot. It's so, so powerful. Like, people really underestimate it. That Hurricane, that always landing Hurricane, no guard Hurricane, stab. It's just very, very powerful. And the fact that it gets a secondary confuse effect makes it very difficult to get through sometimes. So he's going to go for that Hurricane, and that's going to annihilate my Arcanine. I'm going to go for the Toxic because I knew he had no guard, so I was always going to land that Toxic. I thought that was the better 
uh, play to make than doing anything else. I didn't really want to swap out or anything, so I'm just going to attempt to kind of stall this thing for a few turns. I was quite surprised he doesn't seem to be having roost, or he doesn't actually go for roost um, later on. So I'm going to go for the protect here, and he's going to go for the hurricane. Pretty much hurricane heat wave are the moves this thing has. I don't think I've ever seen any other Pidgeot, except for Christmas, have any other moves, because those are the ones that are just spams all the time. So um, he's going to take some toxic damage. And I have no choice but to go for an extreme speed because there's no way I'm going to survive any other attacks from this thing. It does a pretty decent amount and uh, he's going to finish me off with a hurricane which is going to land and all that jazz because of the no guard ability which is really really unfortunate but I guess no guard means that thunder would always land on this thing and um, other attacks like that so you just have to kind of be prepared I guess for these things. So I'm going to bring in my uh, Rotom pretty sure my screening Rotom was going to be my only way of not dying, so he's going to go for an uproar which is going to almost take me out as I'm going to put up a light screen to try and save the ass of the rest of my team from this beast that is Mega Pidgeot, so um, he's making an uproar and he's going to go for another uproar which is going to finish me off I think, even with, oh no, I'm going to survive it actually because of the light screen and uh, I'm able to finish off the Pidgeot with a Volt Switch which is going to take out the Pidgeot, which is good. I don't really like it shiny, it kind of goes green. What is it with Nintendo and green, or Game Freak or whatever, and green shinies, like... This girl is on fire! This girl is on fire! This battle, and uh, I'm actually going to swap out, and, um, because I wasn't sure, I... Part of me thought this thing was banded at this point, but it's actually Life Orb. I, I mean, I see that it's Life Orb when I look back on it, but um, I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention <laughs> to the DS as I was doing this, so I thought it was banded until I um, kind of saw here that he takes that Life Orb recoil. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure I paid attention then, because I was pretty sure this thing was banded. So I'm going to go into my Nine Tails here. Um, uh, my shiny Nine Tails is going to bring out the sun. It's gonna like make everything shiny and new and beautiful. I went for a flamethrower here. I could have gone for a Psy Shock, but um, flamethrower and Psy Shock did literally the same amount uh, when I calculated it. And I thought flamethrower had the burn opportunity as well. And he's gonna go for a Dream Punch and get a critical hit. I'm pretty sure that crit maybe mattered. I, I'm not sure, but he did an awful lot of damage to me and got all of that HP back, which is very frustrating. So I'm gonna go back into this. And uh, shine up like a little beautiful shiny pony that I am and go for a flare blitz on this thing and uh, pretty much oko it because of the sunshine I don't think that may not have okayed otherwise but um, this thing's a real powerhouse or should I say power horse and um, I'm kind of thinking of getting rid of the life orb on this because it makes you a lot more frail with wild charge and flare blitz you're taking a lot of recoil and um, I'm gonna go for a wild charge here as he swaps into his warren and it just, just all that recoil stings and the life orb, ouch. So I know banded is a very good kind of way to go, but I like the idea of having morning sun. Like, so I'm gonna go for morning sun here. Um, this girl really, really saves my ass actually in this battle. Um, so I'm gonna get all my HP back. I'm gonna get it back to full. He's gonna go for a brine, which isn't gonna do too much to me because the sun is up and I still have my light screen that Rodum put up to um, help the rest of my team. So I'm gonna go for a wild charge and it just survives. So that makes me think, oh, if I take a life orb off, is it gonna be hitting as hard? He's gonna go for a swagger here, which I was just like, dude, really? So I got very, very lucky here that I actually don't hit myself in confusion because I feel like if I did, I would have probably killed myself. My light screen worn off and the only Pokemon I actually had left would have been Camera who would have died. So um, I got very lucky there that I didn't hit myself and I was able to take that thing out before it went for a rest because um, that would have been very scary otherwise. And that is the end of the war in and I'm pretty sure that's the end of the battle after I take this butt ton of recoil so yeah uh, so that is the end of the battle I hope you guys enjoyed that battle and um, enjoyed the team so I will see you around if you guys really enjoy my videos and you haven't subscribed then please take a moment to subscribe